Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Now, I'm actually in the Totally Awesome Workshop because I'm going to be trying to show you something to do about lighting. Now, down on the beaches, if you're going out fishing, if you're working out in the environment outside, you've probably got one of these. If not, you really ought to invest in one. They're quite cheap, no question of that. Very, very cheap, in fact, for what they are. And you can get rechargeable batteries with them. You can have a strobe light in case you want to go completely cuckoo. And, you know, they're very, very useful. Go on your head, you can work with your hands free. But sometimes, you know, you're out there and it's really cold. And it's cold out today, to be honest. And if I was out there tonight, if I was working outside, indeed, if I was doing anything in the outdoors, years ago, we didn't have those. Only tiny little, wee, tiny weeny little headlights that used to feed batteries to, like, like you give a kid sweets. Like giving kids kid, kid candy. We used to use these. A pressure lantern. Now, they give out a really good constant light, different to those LED battery powered units that you get nowadays. You can still buy these. This one is it actually made by, I think it was the anchor lamp, I've had it, wait for this, 30 years. It's had some use, had a few services. I haven't used it for years, several years in fact. And I thought, do you know what? I've got a feeling I can get this going again because you can also uses for heat at, at the top here it gets very very hot it runs on pressurized paraffin it's you know can be a fiddle, fiddle to light if, if you're out there on a windy day but once it's going it gives off heat you can even if you wanted to put some tin foil on the top there you can put a, a meat pie or something on the top and you can actually warm a meat pie up i know i've done it from years ago so this is just a brief a little bit of an introduction on how you might be able to, if you've got one of these old lamps, it's been in the garage, like mine for a long time, out in the workshop, out in the shed, in the fishing shed, in the tool shed, don't worry, as long as it's not totally rusted up, a few little pointers and tips, and you could probably get it going again. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now, quite a big unit, I think you'll agree. This is a paraffin pressure lamp. Okay, it, you put your paraffin inside it, it, you pump it up, it's pressurised, and that squirts the paraffin up through a central jet, which just offset, it's actually not central, it comes up in a big loop and comes back down, and it squirts it through a tiny little hole which is adjustable by a needle, and the needle gets hot, and then it vaporises, as it vaporises, it burns with, inside a mantle. You can buy replacement mantles like these, okay? So now, let's just look at it briefly. This is the plunger unit, in fact, let me just show you, I'll just put a pinch on that, let's screw it up. Let's start round here. Okay, this is actually where you fill it up. It has a little release valve here, which you can let it out with. I always open that first before I undo the main filler, because if there's any pressurised paraffin or air in there, you'll hear it, pssst, just releases it, you know it's safe to undo. So I just, if it's done up tight like that, just give it a couple of turns, you'll hear the air come out of there, and just undo it. And you'll see, dead simple, there's your washer, there's the hole for filling, and there's a little filler that you can normally get with these, and it's got a little mesh in there, just so that you don't, it filters out any nasties you might have in your paraffin can. So it's a filter, so it goes in quite clean. It's a little piece of grit inside that jet, the needle can actually block it up. I'm just going to see what's in there, because I did use this a few years ago. I'm going right, to tip that out and change that that paraffin but you you only want to fill it up to about here because if what I found this is only my own experience if you fill it right up till it's overflowing here put it back on and pump it up it pump, pumps fuel out so fast it doesn't burn so well you need a bit of air in there as well so I fill it to about just over three quarters under there as you can see if I tip it forward you just just should see it trickle out my finger there that's there so I reckon I'm down to about here now if you haven't used yours for some time you might want to invest in a new washer because when it's been screwed down tight, it does get grooved. For the purpose of this one, I am going to send away for a washer. Obviously, they're just a matter of pennies. But to show you, this, I'm just going to turn that washer over the other way. Just like that. So as you can see, it's there. And then it's effectively, effectively a new washer. Okay. So I'm going to change this out. Or I'm not going to show you. I'm going to change your oil. Let's it's all been changed in there, which I will do. Screw it back up. Now you can see when it's tight, there's your pressure gauge, like your bar pressure if you like. One, two, three, four, 
and of the scale okay so you do your nut up there now let me just show you around here when you want to pressurize it here's the pumping oh it's locked at the moment let me twist it around there there's a little twist lock there if you can see that you twist it and lock it it's a flat flange and a rounded edge and the rounded edge goes underneath that stops it it locks it in position you want to pump it up you pump up here and it pops up the gauge there you want to get to about between one to one and a half to light it that's what i find now in here as well just so you know just so you know what they look like how these things work the plunger comes right out it's there it's on a spring it's a spring there but there's a leather washer there okay now you can make sure that's nice and tight there but you can also send off and you can get a replacement leather plunger that's for the air going in and out if it starts to wear when you're pumping up and down you're not pushing air into the storage canister so that's a little tip there that's quite a good one i can feel that's like the if you can imagine a piston inside an engine it has to be a piston rings to take up the space that's really what this sort of leather washer is i'm assuming it's leather so let I can feel the pressure there as I'm pushing it in. You can hear it. That's tight to go in. So we do that one back up. And I'll show you the gubbins at the top. Okay, I'm going to try and show you the top half, which is really the most important part. There's the glass shade. You can get those as replacements as well. well let me just undo two rings. There's two rings here and here which are your carrying handles okay but they also hold this uh, top piece on so just undo them they won't come right off because obviously the ring here of the handle is permanently fixed to it you just well you can take them right off you won't you don't need to you just need the gap to be able to take the top off so basically so you can see that's just a cover that is just a cover in here is the housing if i turn it sideways and i'll bring the camera down let's have a look at this and I'll go in a little bit closer. Let's see if we can get that zoomed in for you there. When you pressurise it, it comes up through the spout, up through here, and then vaporises and goes out through the needle at the end. Might even vaporise after it comes out the needle. It's fuel basically travels through here and goes out of there. At the top, you also have an adjusting screw which you can adjust the actual air and mixture like a little. I just felt like carburetor really at the top, I suppose. A little mixture control there you can use. So I'm just going to ease this off. Now this is the point where you must not break that mantle. Now if that was broken, I'd just pull it straight out. So look down the centre here. And you'll see I'm lifting it right out in the circle. There. Now you should be able to see that. This is unbelievably fragile, okay? It does unscrew from there. I'm not going to unscrew it. It does unscrew from there. And when you first get them, they just come. I'll get this one as a piece of cloth. It looks like a piece of cloth. You can see in there, that pink. That's just, that, that, this would all burn off. So you have a piece of cord around the edge, which you tie. If you can see that, I'll bring it closer to the camera. Just around here. And it hangs right down to here. It will hang right down here as a loose pouch. And when you burn it off with meths, that all shrivels up and it actually makes the mantle, which is where all the paraffin vaporises inside, that actually is your light bulb, in effect is a light bulb. Now, having said that unscrews, be careful when you do that. I tend to want to lay that down on its side gently. If it breaks, I'll have to fit another one. That is the downside of all pressure lamps, is damaging the mantle, okay? So I'm gonna take the glass shade out Wiggle it out gently. Again, you can get replacements still at the moment with these. There, it, it, it's a names on it. Can't even read that. So, so well, but you can still get these replacement ones. Give that one a clean. Now, here at the top, I'm going to get the camera and show you. There's a little needle there, which is the adjuster flow for the fuel going in. Okay. Now, I'm hoping you can see that. Just there is a tiny hair-like needle. Now, on the on the valve round here at the side, which is let's say it's your throttle, you can raise and lower that needle. I don't know if you're going to see that or not, just in there. Obviously, if you lower it down, the fuel's going to come out and vice versa, and that will get that's your adjuster for your fuel flow in effect, really. Letting you can you can you can increase it or you can decrease the actual brightness of the light through lowering that needle there. 
So, one of the problems you can get, come around the other side, that needle gets bent inside that shaft. So you need to get a replacement needle. You can just crack that nut there and gently, very carefully undo this. This nut comes off, as you can see. Now if I go around the other side, hopefully when I adjust this, now there you should be able to see how it, oh, there's the fuel. Can you see the difference? As I lower that, watch the fuel come out. And that's those few pumps I did earlier on, on that, uh, on the on the pressure pump there, watch. There comes the fuel comes out. So you can see that. Now to avoid that going all over my desk, I'm gonna undo that valve I showed you earlier on. I can hear the air coming out of it. All the pressure's then released. And if I open it again, you'll see it goes up and down, but no fuel comes out. So you can see that is a sort of fuel adjuster. Okay. Now what happens when this fuel up here, after all it's very hot, you will get carbon on the rod inside. There's like a, this is called, this is a needle at the top. But then there's a centre brass shaft down there, which you can undo a nut here. Let's try and do that now. And I might be at the wrong angle to do this to show you, but I'll try to keep my hands out of the camera shot. Now let's get that one cracked from the other side. Now, if you get an adjustable spanner on that nut here, just pop it. You can leap. You can actually undo this nut. Hopefully you can see this as well. And the whole shebang. Release a bit more pressure on there. Let's get this come out. There we go. Comes out to reveal that shaft of brass underneath. Okay. Now I can already see that the shaft three quarters of the way up has a carbon deposit on it. You can see the black there, which is the carbon deposit leading up towards the top where the needle is right there so let's get that brass needle out which is only done down here at the base pretty well finger tight there we go trying to do it so you can see it you can see the carbon coming off of my finger so the whole rod comes out like that and you can see hopefully there and we just get it in the camera for you there's the needle, so I've got a bit of a build up of carbon here, and also carbon deposits. Also got carbon deposits there. Now you can again, you can buy these rods. You want that fuel to go up there nice and smooth, so I'm gonna get some fine emery paper and just rub this down both here and here to help that fuel go through. But you can also adjust the height of the needle with this nut here, right at the bottom. You can see that nut there. That can be adjusted up and down to make it rise and fall on the little sort of, I guess it's like a cam effect that's in there. Let's get this cleaned up. I've got this main shaft now of brass. Clean it up with a bit of fine paper. Just be very careful of that needle at the top there. You can see it. Now you can take these out, replace them. Generally as spares, there you go. That's what it looks like. Probably best to take that out, put it to one side before I clean the end of this. Get that carbon off of there. And the, the nut at the bottom, the adjusting nut, I won't, I'm going to try and fire this up first. If it needs any more adjustment up or down on the shaft to raise and lower that needle height, I can do it with that nut there. So let's put this needle, generally the people give you uh, two or three needles, you can buy two or three needles, you always want spares, they're very easy to bend. And even though you can get, say, a pair of tweezers or fine pliers to straighten them again, they're never really the same. You can't really get them straight. They need to be straight like that. As you can see, that's ready now to go back in. So minimal maintenance, really. Now for this uh, main shaft here, as you can see, black on the outside, there's probably some carbon on the inside as well. So if you wanted, if you get a piece of fine emery paper and just roll it around something very fine I don't use the actual brass piece at the insert you can get that indeed in there and you can give that a good cleaning as well get um, I'm just I'm not doing all of it I'm just doing a bit I've already done some of this anybody before so I'm just showing you what we do and get some of the carbon there look black so I know there's plenty of carbon in there I'm pretty sure if we just follow this procedure as basic as it may seem we should get this lamp going, this pressure lamp going. It's not been going for years. I'm just cleaning out the worst of the carbon in it there. Again, all these parts you can normally buy 
again if you want but to be honest you know if you can just work away and, and clean them up say every fifth or sixth trip that's all you need there we go you just want something I'm just using the end of a paintbrush here just to get it right up in there give it a good don't snap it off won't be easy to get out spin it around you can try vertically or just twisting it around and that's pretty well clean and polished on the inside that's now ready to go back so all basic tips really troubleshooting in effect okay having cleaned all the brass center needle and either straightened and or bought a new needle air replacement let's assume we put a spare in or we've been lucky I'm going to put it back in here just in that uh, central area that the fuel comes out just twist it down when I twisted it down I always check see if it's moving up or down yep still going up and down and then I realign the shaft on the top over the top of it just gently now this is where you've got to be careful you've got to slide that down without bending the needle generally once it's inside the needle naturally comes out at the top and again make sure you don't get cross threaded down here and make sure that the circle on the top which is where the fuel goes round make sure that is dead central because that's inside here is where your mantle's got to rest right let's just nip that up a second you don't need to over tighten these they're brass, you'll strip it. So just give it a nice neat tweak. Okay. Now I put the nut back on the top. This is also you know pretty critical. You need to what I find best actually, my tip would be to drop the shaft down with the needle in it, and then just gently, because if it if it's up high and you screw this thread on, just do it gently now. It can bend, it can bend the needle. So now I'm just going to feel my finger. Yes, I could just feel the needle pip come through the top. I'm going to try and zoom in and show you that. So I've dropped the needle down. I'm just screwing this on, but before I do it up tight, I just feel gently, can I feel a needle there? Raise it up and just do it very carefully. And I can just feel it coming up there. Can you guys see it? That should be up now. So that's the needle just through the top there. There we go. There, I can just feel it. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see that on the camera. There's an absolute hair at the top. Maybe if I move it, you can see it going up. I can, I can, I can definitely just feel a little pricking with my finger. There you are, like that. Should be able to see that. So be careful when you put that nut on that you don't actually bend the end of the needle over. And then again, just give it a little tweak. Not a great deal. You don't want to, you don't want to pull out of alignment this uh, this ring, this ring here. Get that just on there, nut there. Don't want to do it too tight. Just enough so that the fuel obviously can come out. Now I just want to show you. I managed to take one out of the package. This is the new replacement mantle. My mantle's okay. If there's a hole in it, replace it. They're only very cheap, but they're like silk. And they're just made in such a soft material and one end what it is basically look you can see it's very very pliable and the pink side has a hole in it so it's like a little bag if you like where the air can get in and you've got a little couple of drawstrings there so you put it round the base i'll just show you very carefully of one that's already burnt off around the base here of a piece of ceramic and it effectively, these are so fragile when they're burnt, I can't tell you. So this shape, when you burn it off with the first paraffin burn, will assume, or should assume, this shape. So it's going to suck right back up and make a ball. Now where I can touch this like this now, you didn't even breathe on this thing. It's absolutely as fine as you could ever get. In fact, the principle of how it doesn't actually fall to pieces when it's burning under pressure is beyond me. But there you go, that's what they look like. Get a packet of two, three, because you're always going to get through them. You just bump them and you go, oh, it's gone. Easy to change. Five, ten minutes, burn it off. You've got a new one. But be careful with them because they are very fragile when they have been set.
Okay, I'm just giving the uh, the glass shade here. It's called a Suprex glass. It's obviously very, very highly resistant to heat. What you're going to do is you're going to slide this over first, and it just pops right down in here and rests. Now you've got here down at the bottom there. I'll just show you. Now you've got down here at the bottom a reservoir, which is where you're going to light the fuel from. So the paraffin's going to be coming up here pressurised. We're going to hold the tap with it closed until this gets really hot and it starts to vaporise. In here, to create that temperature, we're going to put some methylated spirits. We're going to burn that, and that burning methylated spirits up here will get the mantle hot, ready to sort of uh, flame up. You'll see it's much easier to show people as they go along. So you need to be able to do all this in one go, really. I'm just going to show it to you as it is. So the glass is in there, now you can see here, I'm hoping you can see this, there's a hole here and if I turn out the other way, it continues in piping down here and when it goes through there, that's where it comes into the mantle. So looking at the end of that, you can see, if I tip it there, you can see that's a circle here where the mantle has to go through without touching the sides because it will break and this is your inflow if you like and that, that brass nut with the needle has to locate in that hole there and you also have to lay, locate two squares here if you can see those either side over here so it's very very careful so you just get it lined up so you know and then I always aim on this and do it with two fingers you cannot afford to mess around with it there we go it just locates in nicely just gently don't jam it down wiggle it it's down job done all I'm going to do then is, I'm just doing this to show you, drop the top on, make sure you screw up your carrying handles because that pinches the top on and actually holds it and you're ready for moving around with it. Now, what about lighting it? Two ways to light these. You have what's called a sort of instant jet, you used to call it jetting. And there's a, a funnel up here and a lever here. Now mine is totally seized up because I never ever used it because you use quite a lot of your fuel for jetting. But you used to have to open this, put your lighter in there, and that would flame and it would be roaring like this. You see a jet coming out of that tube and generally it would be 30, 40, 50 seconds and it would be a light. A much, much, it's like a, a fast burn effect if you like. But when I'm out all night, it's going to use a lot of, lot of, lot of paraffin. So I didn't... I never really use a jet, to be honest. I use it two or three times and figured, well, the problem being you have to switch the lamp right off to refill it. I would sooner have the lamp pretty full here and use a slower burn to start it with the methylated spirits, knowing I've got probably six or eight hours of fuel left in here, probably eight hours to give me light all through the night. So what we're going to do is we filled up, let's assume we filled up with paraffin, and then I'm going to shut that valve at the top and whether you can see that or not, there's a little arrow there. I put the arrow to the top. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it around here. And I'm going to pump up here until such time as I get the pressure up to about one and a half. Just like this. Okay, so we're just going to undo that and I'm ready to pump. Now some people go to two, but I actually find... About one and a half, I can get up to the one and a half mark, that's enough to get me started. Keep this oiled with uh, something like WD-40, and I push down on the lamp because I do not want to vibrate that mantle. Now, I can hear by the noise, it's changing a pitch and going higher. So I know the pressure's coming up. Nearly up to one now. I turn that round and I zoom in on it. You should, hopefully, he says, be able to see I'm just over one on the pressure. Up here on two would be about the average average burn. So I'm going to go get it up to two, uh, and that, just under two, about one and a half is enough. And then we're ready to get it started. Okay, to fill. That little reservoir at the base with paraffin, they give you this little dispenser which you unscrew and it's got a nice brass tube there so you can stretch out and just 
fill that reservoir up because methylated spirits, for those of you who don't know, evaporates really, really quickly. Obviously, it burns, usually a sort of purpley flame. So I'm going to fill that up, that little canister. Screw the top on there. There we go, it snaps on. Now you could lean across, stretch through under the glass shade and light it with a regular flame. I, however, recommend these little auto lighters which have a little thumb piece here which lock it and it slots down in the same carry-on box that I take it in so you can't make any mistakes. It won't, it won't light or spark until you unlock the safety. And then you can adjust it with a flame up or down just to light it. So much easier, I feel, much safer because you can stretch under the glass. Right, let's get all this moving smoothly. Now, to get this lit, unscrew the hood at the top with the handles on it so you can take the top off. You've got to take off very carefully without damaging that mantle there. You can see the mantle just here. You don't want to damage that at all. Just lay it down gently to one side. And what I'm going to do is fill this up, light it, and put the mantle back on straight away. So this is how it should work. Just check my light is working, yeah. So I'm gonna put this camera further down, hopefully so you can see that, that reservoir down there, which I'm gonna fill just there. So just slide the glass up. I just use that to fill up with methylated spirits. And I light the meths. Let it heat up and it should be away. That's away, lower the glass down because you want to do this relatively quickly. Nice and sweet, it's not hot at the moment. I put on that lid, the hood at the top, make sure it's located there. Do the nuts up so you can pick it up and move it around. Generally I'll be doing this outside obviously, doing it in the garage, keep it away from all combustible materials. Now, I'll just zoom in there, and you can see that the, the mess, you should be able to see it there, is heating up that stalk. And you should just be able to see that glowing. Now, the, the actual power, if you like, for turning on, I'll move this around the other side, is needle is here. Now, if you open that now, it will flood neat fuel into the centre of the mantle, and it will burn and flame out and it just won't light. It needs to be vaporised. It's no good burning the paraffin. It just whooshes around and it will never light. And you have to start all over again. So you need to let this nearly burn out, this, this at the bottom. Almost all of that has to go because that way you know it's hot enough in there to actually vaporise that paraffin. And then you can just open it gently. You should usually hear a popping sound. It's, they say it hasn't been used for years. This is a real trial and error thing. If I've done it properly, it should work. However, we might need a second go at it. Fingers crossed. We're going to give that a little while to burn up and heat all this mantle and the brass and the fuel. I'm just going to open this valve a little bit. And if it floods paraffin, I'm going to close it again. It might even be beneficial just to show you it. If it takes, great. If it doesn't, at least you see what it shouldn't do. Very slowly. I can hear the paraffin hissing. There we go. We got lucky, folks. No, nearly too much. You see it flame out then? I'm just going to leave it like that because I want it to vaporize inside that mantle. Now it's getting hot. The last of this meth is going to burn away here. I can just adjust it, tweak it back a little bit more. Around here on my, my pressure. I've still got over one on the bar pressure and hopefully you can see that on the camera it is indeed going and it's getting warm around the top as well. I'm just going to try a real tweak open. That's what you call power. That's what you call a pressure lab. Yeehaw! It's working after all those years. And just remember if you do want to shut it down without the valve on the side just release this air pressure, the little nut on the side of the pressure gauge here. It releases all the air. 
it dies down, you'll hear it. It dies right down, but it's still very hot. Just be careful with it. Let it cool down before you put it away. And don't forget, close it up again. Oh, I am tickled pink. That lamp is 30 years old. I haven't used it for several years, maybe three or four years. A little bit of servicing. You can replace that leather plunger, make sure that's working. Replace the leather washer or the rubber washer over the fill. I turned it around if you remember. I took out the needle, just check the needle's okay. If not, replace it. The main thing is you want a clean flow of fuel over that brass center shaft. Just emery paper that down. Check the mantle's okay, if not replace the mantle. And there you are, 350 candle power. They make a 500 candle power one, can you believe that? This is 350 candle power, more than enough to light up anything I'm working outdoors with. And more important, it's throwing out an unbelievable amount of heat. When you're outside in the winter, the head torch is not gonna warm your hands. This is homely, great, makes you feel good. I can cook a meat pie on it. Tell you what, let me put the lights out and see if you can see it then. Camera light first. It's pitch black outside by the way. Wow! <laughs> Guys, it's pitch black in here. Look, I can't tell you. I'm going to put the lamp outside so you know how dark it is. You know I'm not faking it. I'm just going to put the lamp outside carefully shut the door and you can see yes it's dark let's go and get it it can show you it lights up an absolutely enormous area you should be able to see me in there who wouldn't want to see me in there so there you go a few tips a little bit of troubleshooting very very easy to do on a good old reliable anchor pressure lamp Great for outdoors, camping, fishing, anything you want to do, working in the garage, it's there, it's got heat. Mind you, working in the garage, make sure you've got the door open guys, fumes, don't forget it's still a burning combustible unit, but it's paraffin, not petrol. I believe you can get petrol ones by the way, do not put anything but paraffin in a paraffin oil lamp. It will light, but it will light with a bang, you don't want any of that. Very, very pleased with that. As you can see, a brilliant lamp. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show and keep watching us. Tell your friends about it, subscribe, and don't forget we do a fishing show that's about the third biggest fishing show in the world. If you're an outdoorsman, you're bound to go fishing, fishing sooner or later. You might want one of these and you might want some of our Totally Awesome Fishing Show tips. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh.